chat, what NL food take do you most disagree with? This is a question. I mean, we've, we've been building a, a lexicon of takes for 10 years. Well, look, take you have to... Because I'm, I'm getting torn up a little bit here. Let me, let me start a prediction. Me not liking eggs is not a take. That's just my opinion. Like, what are, what are some classic NL food takes? Um, you should be scared of an adult who orders milk to drink at a restaurant. That's, that's a take. Now, I agree with it because I made the take. But at the same time, you may very much disagree with it. The zero with chip take. Okay, that's a take. That the, the best tasting chip is... The, the best part of eating chips is the microsecond before the first chip that you anticipated eating touches your lips. Frozen PB and J. I mean, that that's just like... It's one of those things where I gotta... You just gotta let it go. That's not even a take. My take was just that it doesn't make sense to pre-prepare seven peanut butter and sandwich uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and then put them in the freezer because you the the reason you do food prep is to save yourself like a disproportionate amount of time by making all the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches at once you save like 20% time I wouldn't consider something to be a justifiable meal prep until you're, you're getting into like the, you know, it saves you from cooking like multiple lunches or dinners or something like that. That one I stand by. It just, if, if anyone was like, here's a life hack. I make all seven peanut butter and jelly sandwiches at once and then just put them in the freezer. I would be like, that's not a life hack. You save me like four minutes a week. That's nothing. That's not a life hack. That's like a, it's a, it's a meager optimization. Joke food and serious food? I'll defend that one. Dude, there are some joke foods. I'm not trying to be pretentious about it, but some foods are jokes. Like a giant turkey leg from Disneyland? That's a joke. It doesn't mean it can't be tasty or like you can't enjoy it, but it's, it's a joke food. One does a person does not eat a whole turkey leg when they're in a serious mood. That's it's a silly food. Dunkaroos are are not a serious food. He's nostalgia baiting us. <laughs> turkey ass is a serious food for sure, for sure. I mean, that's a given. I've, I've never eaten a whole turkey leg at an amusement park, but it did always strike. I, I've never seen someone that has like a half-eaten turkey leg and also has a smile on their face. They always look like like that Kanye tweet where they're like, you ever bring a water bottle onto an airplane and now for the rest of the flight, you got to babysit this uh, water bottle? You know, let's get spun. It looks, it, it seems like one of those foods you enjoy for like the first, you know, five minutes. And then after that, you're like, uh, I kind of wish I just got like a churro instead. Is meatloaf a serious food? I mean, I, I would say meatloaf is like a, it's a serious food that has a silly name. Like, it's a food you, you eat for dinner with your family. It's not like cotton candy or something like that. But it does have a silly name, Meatloaf. Now that you have a child, do you take back your picky eater hate? Oh, you mean now that uh, I have a, a literal toddler, do I have more sympathy for adults who only eat pepperoni pizza with mayonnaise spread on top of it? I'll let you read between the lines on that one. The, the, the real answer is, is that it's complicated. 
the the as long as we're doing you know VH1 behind the takes here, all of my negativity towards picky eaters stems from one very simple question. Are you a picky eater because you don't like the food or because you think you won't like the food? Because I've having been a picky eater myself, there is a distinction. And if you find yourself saying, why does it matter? Personally, that's your fucking problem, okay? I don't know why it matters, but why won't you answer the question? If you... I, if you genuinely, like, if we go out to eat, and you're like, oh, I've never had artichokes before, and then I go, oh, here, have one of these artichoke hearts, like, it, you might as well give it a try if you've never had it. If you go, or you ask, you give me, like, an interrogation, like, can before I place this food in my mouth and immediately, uh, within 0 0.01 seconds, my brain gives me an appraisal of its taste. Could you write an essay on its mouthfeel and, and its flavor? And is the texture a little squishy or is it a little slimy? And I'm, If you're open to eating foods and then you don't like them when you eat them, I don't have a problem with you. I, I have some pity for you, I suppose. But if you're like, I'm a picky eater, um... And just bizarrely, for whatever reason, like, I, I, there's a lot of foods that I just simply will not eat because I think I wouldn't like them, but I will not try them, then I, then I, I meet that with the slightest bit of judgment. Not derision, just judgment. But I don't know, every, every time you talk about picky eating, it always becomes some argument about, like, um, freedom or something like that. Why can't I... I'm a grown adult. Why can't I eat a dinosaur chicken nugget for every meal if I want to? Well, you can, but, like, it's like freedom of speech, right? Like, freedom of eating doesn't give you freedom of, like, not being made fun of or whatever. Plus, it's like, I, I see you online. People that eat chicken tenders for, like, every single meal will be like, don't make fun of me. I'm a picky eater. It's a texture thing. But then meanwhile, they'll make like a thousand jokes about veganism. How do you know somebody's a vegan? Oh, don't worry. They'll tell you. So, you know, I mean, admittedly, this is the, the strawest straw man that's ever existed. I'm just asking you to hold yourself to the same standards that you hold other people to. I make fun of a lot of stuff, but I also am not above making fun of myself. I mean, all that diarrhea talk, for example, I, I, I want you to know I'm down in the muck with you. a plus two conveyor belt you can be a picky eater if you want it's fine like it, it actually doesn't matter but if i'm out with you at you know uh why, why would i come in here what am i thinking man i don't want to just give me the angel deals i say no i say no to that dude let's go two shot speed oh. we're in the damn clear Like, I, I really don't care if you're a picky eater, but, like, again, I think there's, like, there's noble pickiness, which is I'll try anything. I just happen to dislike a lot of foods for whatever reason. That's fine. And then, like, there's not noble picky eaters, which are, like, I'm scared of a little negative taste in my mouth. That's where I'm, like, you gotta at least give it a try. And I, again, it comes from a place of... Um, understanding. Because I was an insane picky eater before I went to college. I didn't like to eat soup because I was like, every food I eat is a solid. Now I'm going to start introducing liquids into my diet. Oh, what's next? Maybe I'll start huffing some gas-based foods or something like that. I, I didn't eat rice, be mostly because I just thought it was annoying like uh, now i gotta you know i could just be having some french fries you like pick one up with your fingers and you're good to go but this rice is like so much effort to eat and stuff like that and then in university you know you get to the dining hall and you realize like if you want to be a picky eater that's fine just prepare to destroy your body because like the only foods that are available to you for you to eat 
that would fulfill this insane criteria are like pizza and chicken fingers and you're gonna have like a heart attack in your 30s so instead i said you know what let's um let's start embracing the idea of uh you know eating some foods that are a little out of my comfort zone and wouldn't you know it turns out all these foods that i had a preconceived notion that i wouldn't like because they were different than the shit that i started eating when i was two were actually like pretty tasty and I was actually just like unnecessarily limiting myself by being like, you know, oh, I don't think I like, I don't think I would like onion. I mean, look at it. So that's why I, I have that, not disdain, but like I, I'm almost, I feel like it's a big brother sort of influence where I'm like, maybe you're not in that camp. Bro, please, please. Maybe you're not, um, Someone who's afraid to try new foods, and you're just picky because you don't like the way they taste for whatever reason. That's fine, as long as, in my opinion, you're actually tasting them. But again, it's your life, you know? If you want to become the president and then treat the Golden State Warriors to uh, 40 McDonald's hamburgers and chicken nuggets when they come visit you, then, you know, don't let me stop you. You're a big boy. You're mommy's special lad. By all means. Just saying, there's a whole world out there that, that you might be limiting yourself from experiencing for, for a reason that I consider less... I mean, self-limiting. Just self-limiting. But again, it's your life. This is the least hypocritical take after you ate cat shit. My man will literally try anything once. That's what I'm saying. That's what I've been saying. No. Dude, is honestly, this game's getting a little out. Of, it's getting a little out of control. It's getting a little out of control with the negativity. Don't say that someone said I'm a picky eater because I'm broke and I can't afford to eat foods I don't like. What if being a picky eater has led you to only consuming frozen pizzas, which are like $9 a serving, though? And if you try to, you know, some beans and some chickpeas and some lentils and some brown rice, you know, you could be saving 30% on your margins every single week. Don't don't just put I'm broke in parentheses as as like a the Dr. Manhattan vapor trump card. We got to evaluate this on its uh on its own merits. Chad, I don't live in the Midwest, okay? Frozen pizzas are expensive here. People are like out of touch, but re they're saying I'm out of touch. It's you who's out of touch. You're out of touch with Vancouver. Now, maybe Vancouver itself is out of touch with Canton, Ohio. I don't know. I've never been to the Baseball Hall of Fame. But I'm telling if you, if you go to the grocery stores within the city proper, those are the numbers you're going to see. So don't tell me I'm out of touch. It's Morbin time. South Cincinnati, lol. Lol! I want it. This is our deal with the Angel Floor. This one's going to make or break us for sure. Curved Horn was very nice, though. Anyway, that's that's my thoughts on, on Picky Eaters. At, at the end of the day, it is also... Like, it's your life. I'm just saying... Like, it, I'm thankful that I'm past the point of my life now where like I, I will roll in a group of like eight adults and it, nothing gives me more anxiety than seeing a group of like 10 adults walking on the sidewalk and knowing they're trying to choose what restaurant they're gonna have to go to for dinner but, like two of them are gluten-free one of them's vegan uh one of them the only vegetable they'll eat is like potato and carrot and then somebody's like i don't care what it is as long as the entire cost for the dinner is like four dollars or less Just, man 
That, that, that brings me right back. Adult picky eaters definitely, they do exist for sure. Potato and carrot guy is a giga chad. You can't just say the guy who is, he represents what you believe is a giga chad. Although I guess that's the way that the meme is typically used. My cousin's husband is 31 and only eats mac and cheese and chicken nuggets. You know what though? That's kind of like a, I wish you would take that story back. Because people should not labor under the pretense that they're going to maintain that diet and find a spouse. That's something we, we, we can't fill people with false hope like that. Based, based. It's not, dude, honestly. I don't know. You, I'm, I'm on my hater arc, as I've said. I don't think it's based to just eat mac and cheese and chicken nuggets as a 31-year-old man. Like, the, the dream is not to never grow up. I think the dream is to maintain the positives of youth while also acknowledging that there are positive things about getting older. Like, most of the reason that people, like, eat differently in their 40s than they do in their 20s is because if they ate in their 20s like they ate in their 40s, their body would, like, fall apart and rot. This is not based to just be like, I'm destroying myself just to eat fried chicken morsels. Like, that's... What's based is fueling your body with whatever you need, both mentally and physically, to you know, continue fulfilling the processes of life in a, in a comfortable way, you know, to, to, so you could be there for your family and so you could, you know, have some respect for yourself and stuff like that. Like that. That's cringe. Well, like, well, you know what? I guess I'm cringe then. I'll take that. I'll be cringe. I'm not saying you got to eat exclusively, you know, soylent for every meal. I'm just saying not exclusively Chicken nuggets and mac and cheese? I, Cause like, I, what do you do? Like, you go, so you go out, it's date night with your wife. You have to go to a restaurant where you eat, either, they have chicken nuggets or mac and cheese on the menu? That's really limiting your options, man. Like it's, you're only going to like pubs and fast food restaurants? No, I'm not taking this, I refuse. I thought about it and then I backed off. Every place has a kid's menu? No, they they don't, though. They, there's the, A lot of restaurants you might go for, like, a date night do not have a kid's menu. Also, you can't... You, dude, think about your wife. She's, got a, she's going out for dinner with somebody. It's the man she's going to have a child with. She orders, oh, you know what? Let me get the uh, Blanco Tagliatelle. That sounds good. And you know what? I will pay a little extra for the squid ink. And what, what kind of wine pairing would you recommend for that? Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, I'll take a, I'll take a six ounce glass of that. And then the, you're, the man you're gonna spend the rest of your life with says, can I get one portion of mac and cheese off the kid's menu and one portion of chicken nuggets off the kid's menu? She's got to go home and look herself in the mirror after that, man. Like, can you, you could meet her halfway and make her life a little easier, I think. Based, based, based. <laughs> and, yeah, and then he's like, what wine pairing goes well with that? Hmm, okay. Why do you care so much? Is it just funny? I mean, it's not... I guess the real answer is, I don't know. I guess I care because it's kind of noteworthy to meet a man my age who only eats chicken nuggets and mac and cheese. Like, that's very atypical. Honestly, fuck the question. Why do you care so much? That's a no They would do, like, a whole episode on TLC about that. That's why I care. Because it's noteworthy. A Syrah would pair nicely with that. Mm. What's the... Soup of the... What's the soup du jour? It's the soup of the day. That sounds delicious. I'll have that.
Again, you know, you can live your life. Don't get me wrong. But you gotta... I mean, look, I, okay, I walk on my toes and I'm bald and I went bald when I was 19. I weathered the storm of, of being bantered with. Because that's not typical. You don't meet a lot of college students in undergrad who are like legally not able to drink yet, but have already lost all of their hair and also walk like a weirdo. At no point did I go, why do you care so much that I'm bald? I recognize that, you know, the, the banter is is part of the lifeblood of modern communication. You know, it's it's a it's a playground that you can bandy about in. You can learn something about the people. You can learn something about yourself. And if you can't make fun of yourself, then uh, honestly, I think you got some growing up to do. If you're a 31 year old man, I mean, you better be able to make fun of yourself because if you go out for like a business dinner with your boss or something like that. And he takes you to Dorcia, and you gotta ask the the waiter if they've got mac and cheese or chicken nuggets on the menu. I mean, you're gonna have to defend yourself with some humor. You might as well practice here in Twitch chat, where it's it's a safe space. I gotta be honest, I think this run might be over. Am I safe from the banter because I'm only 26? I mean, I think there's still time. My advice, if you're a picky eater, I would honestly, like, here's what I would say, okay? There's a reason that there's like so many different kinds of restaurants out there. Just like once a week, eat a meal that goes off the beaten path. If you only eat like mac and cheese and chicken nuggets, try try some Chinese food. It's not weird, I promise you. You know, go eat some Korean barbecue. Like it's literally just meat. Try something, you don't have to like immediately go out there and start eating the, the maggot cheese or anything like that. But just like once a week, try something that's slightly out of your comfort zone. Just slightly. Eat like a spinach or something like that. And you it's one of those things that I think will be self... What's the word I'm looking for? It's like a positive feedback loop. You will probably try something new and be like, wow, that's good, which will make you want to try more new stuff in the future. You overestimate my economic situation? Okay, instead of making air fryer chicken nuggets, start making like some, you know, make make a, a bean chili or something like that, okay? Whatever, if, if you're only eating mac and cheese and chicken nuggets, you could definitely lower your budget on food. I don't know why people are trying this like false dilemma here that's like, I don't have money, so the only thing I can afford to eat is frozen chicken nuggets. Like you can get cheaper than that, man. That, that kind of disingenuous take is not gonna fly with the grocery king. I've seen the prices of the frozen foods at the grocery store. This run is pure ass. I'm in a lot of trouble. New guy just dropped. Guy who only eats mac and cheese and chicken nuggets. And when he orders DoorDash, orders chicken nuggets. I don't really want to cook chicken nuggets tonight, honey. Do you think we could just order some chicken nuggets? Anyway, so that's if, if that's the take you agree or that that's the question I guess you had for me. Do I feel differently about picky eaters? I don't know. It, it's, it depends on why they're picky eaters, you know? Some people, I think, they, it's unavoidable. It's baked in. 
There's only specific textures that they can actually enjoy and no amount of exposure therapy is gonna like change that for them. But then some people I think they're just kind of like grossed out by the idea of like um, like a red pepper and then just decided to, to never challenge that assertion. I don't know what the difference is between them. You know, I, I don't know what the proportion is. I'm just, I, 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 I was in the latter category. So I know that the latter category definitely exists. I'm a picky eater, yet I eat ass. Explain. Well, that's what's like so messed up, right? Is that chat on the one hand, like there's people in chat who are like, this is a bad take. Like, I only want to eat the things that I want to eat. Why should I ever do anything else? They're the like most picky eaters of all time. But then they also have like the most insane fetishes. Fucking, oh, don't you love it when uh a goth, a big titty goth GF pulls out a gun and fucking kills you. They always, they say sh shit like that. Oh, I love when uh, a little gremlin girl pulls out a knife and fucking cuts my legs off, you know? And I'm like, you won't eat a mushroom? You won't even try it? But you would love to be literally swallowed by a giant lady. I don't think so. I don't, if you can't handle eating a, a an enoki mushroom, I don't think you can handle being swallowed by a 90-foot-tall Japanese woman, okay? I don't think you got the stones for it. I think she's going to want a man who eats something besides chicken nuggets and mac and cheese because you are what you eat. She's going to she's going to go for somebody who's not afraid to take some culinary risks. I'm not going to lose this one. We're going to win this. I can... Do we have base stats in every category? Yeah, more or less. Except we do have like plus one HP. Um, but this is where we're going to get our deal with the angel. The deal with the angel is going to be... Something good. I'm going to say it's, it's going to be good enough. It's going to be the halo. And then we're off to the races. I won't eat vegetables, but I'll eat ass, no problem. It's actually crazy. Because, like, I mean, you should eat vegetables. <laughs> I swear I'm leaving it. <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't eat ass, by the way. I'm just saying that if you're like, ooh, vegetables are icky, but then you're also like, damn, baby girl, do it be shitting, then you should acknowledge that you hold two positions at the same time which should create some cognitive dissonance for you that that should create some some stress in your life because you're not living by a coherent set of standards i'm just saying as long as, as long as your girlfriend's eating some vegetables, that's okay. Well, I mean, if that's the only way that you can get, um, like, vegetable content is via some trickle-down economics like that, then okay, sure. But I mean, again, the other thing, people say, like, why do you care? I, it's hard to, exp I really don't. If I went out for dinner with you to a fancy restaurant and you ordered, you know, kids menu hot dog or something like that, we can still be friends. But there is also, and I know how this sounds, this sounds like what bullies saying, like, I'm just bullying you to protect you. But I am also, like, the, the reason I care, I guess, is because I want you to know that not everybody on earth is as nice as I am. They may not be as judgmental as I am, but they will be, when they are judgmental, they'll be much ruder about it. I am judgmental to inoculate you from the judgment you will receive from the rest of society. Why so serious? Sundere? Yes, it is Sundere. I learned that word from Xavier uh, Renegade Angel. It's my favorite new show. It comes on right after Chicago Party Aunt. 
my favorite genre of television program, adults behaving badly. But you can eat whatever you want, I don't care. The only other reason I care is because it's... Um, it's really nice, and I, you're going to spin the victim card on this, and that's fine. It's really nice to have, like, you know, two adults over for dinner and just ask them if they're allergic for something and then cook something that you like cooking instead of having to ask just so we know... Does your boyfriend only eat mac and cheese and chicken nuggets? Hey, do you have any dietary restrictions? I was hoping to make some uh, paella. We do a beautiful paella. I'd love to share it with you. Well, we don't have any food allergies, but Jared only eats chicken nuggets and mac and cheese. That's that's a problem. I mean, that, that, I guess we'll be having chicken nuggets and mac and cheese then. Or alternatively, we'll have some paella and then we'll give Jared a special plate. Maybe like one of those McDonald's ones with Hercules on it from the mid-1990s. And he can have some, I guess he can have some. I mean, I'm already used to making a meal for my wife and myself. And then, you know, like five nights a week, I'll, I'll make a meal for my daughter as well. Sometimes she'll just eat what we're eating, but... But I do also want, having been a, a, a picky eater myself, I do also understand that that sucks to hear. Because it's very stressful to be a picky eater and be worried about what's going to be there for dinner. Because you're like, I'm not sure if I can eat this. So, they, like, everybody's kind of like the victim in this situation. What if her father introduced him to me? That's pretty true. That's pretty true. Where be your nutcracker? Your stomach, your rules. I also just think, you know, there's like a knock-on effect, right? Like if you can only eat such a strict... And, and again, if you have a real dietary or, or like mental block on it, then, then so be it. But, you know, if you can only eat a set subset of foods you know that's going to limit your ability to to meet new people and to see new things you know and to travel and to, maybe that stuff doesn't interest you but you're i mean i my personal take is you're missing out a little bit if you feel like you know oh i can like, never leave the united states of america because if i travel to you know spain i'm not sure where i'm going to get my chicken nuggets from or something like that but but maybe, maybe the, the comfort of the chicken nugget diet is worth more than the experience of something new. And I think there's some validity in that if you truly know yourself. Okay, I walked on the spikes. No nuggets in all of Spain? I'm just saying you wouldn't know where to get them, man. And the, the irony right now, I'm really craving some chicken nuggets. Maybe for lunch today, I'll go out and get some chicken nuggets. Get them from McDonald's? I couldn't find them in McDonald's. They had nuggets, but they were called Polo Nuggets. I don't want Polo Nuggets. I want some damn Chicken McNuggets. I, I just remember, and again, this is like, I mean, it's judgmental, don't get me wrong. But like, I remember when I went to Korea, when I was doing teacher training, keep in mind, I was like 22 at the time. I was doing teacher training with a guy who was in his 30s. And uh, when we went out for lunch one day, he, we were like, what do you like to eat? And he was like, oh, I'm like a really picky eater. I don't like spicy food, and I don't really eat many vegetables. And I was like, you are fucked. You should have done some research on the country before you chose to come here. Because you're in for like a long year, my man. Korean food is, I mean, it's not that vegetable rich necessarily. But it's like, most Korean dishes are spicy. 
And especially, well, maybe not most, but a lot of them are. And especially if you don't speak the language, like, you're gonna be... You're gonna be struggling, man. Un until you find, you know, the existence of something called, like, Sulantong, which is a, an English-speaking only foreign resident of Korea. It, it could take you, like, ten years to figure out that the food even exists. You finally see Cartel Monkey? Dude, honestly, I, I still don't know what Cartel Monkey is, but I, I, I did like my joke from yesterday that is that the same thing as the Dalai Lama? Again, I don't know what it is. People told me Cartel Monkey died, and I said, what's that? And then their response was, he was wearing a bulletproof vest. I don't know what this means. What's mild in Korea? I mean, there's a lot of mild Korean foods. It has a reputation for spiciness, but like a lot of the soups are, are mild, you know, like a samgaetang, a, a, you know, like a chicken soup. Galbitang, salantang. Maybe this makes me a hater, by the way, but I felt so betrayed in the second episode of the new Iron Chef when Alton Brown calls it gochujang like 10 times. Alton, you're, you're, you're the food guy. Nobody uh, on the entire staff of Iron Chef is going to say it's gochujang. Gochujang? Gochujang is a spicy Korean uh, red pepper paste that's included in lots of their cuisines. They're just saying gochujang over and over. It's not like a huge deal, it's just, I'm just surprised. The same people who are like, please, for the love of God, do not call it pho, it's pho, are like, yeah, dude, you ever have gochujang? I love it. But then, I don't even, don't even get me started, you know, the number of times people like, fake, cor they, they, they correct me without realizing that they're wrong. This joke does not kill in Twitch chat. Twitch chat hates this joke. Every time I'm at my in-laws place, I tell this story and it fucking destroys. They love it. Because they're Korean-American. And I'm always like, you know what's annoying is when you're talking to other Americans and you say Samsung and they go, what the hell is Samsung? It's Samsung. Shit drives me crazy. Oh, what kind of phone do you have? Oh, it's a Samsung Galaxy. Samsung? What the fuck? That, it, that joke crushes with my in-laws, man. I'm telling you. Is it really called Samsung? Yeah, the A in Korean, for the most part, it, it has that sound. It has like a uh sound. Annyeong Haseo. What about Hyundai? Hi, Hyundai. Same, same thing. We say it like that in Europe. Common Europe dub, stay winning. In-laws like, why is he telling the same joke for the hundredth time? No, honestly, you can get away with it because like, they, they got busy lives. Like, they, they got other shit going on. If anything, I, I think, like, most people... Like, Twitch chat has really high standards. Sometimes they'll be... I get called for using a reused joke from, like, 2017. They'll be like, you said that already when I was in 8th grade. And I'm like, damn, dude, let's come on. I get, I'm trying to create five hours of content a day here. I, I might have to revisit some of the greatest hits. But for most people, when they hear a joke they already know, they kind of like it because it's like... They're like, oh, I don't even have to worry about whether I'm going to enjoy this one. I already know it's a slapper. It's why the Jeff Dunham tour sells out so fast every year. That's me every day at work saying, living the dream. Working hard, hardly working, hot enough for you. They'll let anybody into this place, etc., etc.
They'll let anybody in it. It looks like they'll let anybody into this place. Love it, dude. Okay, you know what? I mean, we're using we're using the sun card. Had to be done. Well, you have to... I, some people are saying you anglicize some words when you put them in English. You have to remember that I got called racist by someone in Twitch chat. It's literally one guy. But I said, I call it faux because you can't win. If you ever say, hey, let's go out for faux, you run the risk of somebody being like, actually, that's it's called pho. And you have to be like, I know, I just didn't know if you knew, which is why I called it faux in the first place. And if you say pho, and then they go, what's pho? You go, oh, it's like a Vietnamese noodle soup that's rich in cilantro. They go, oh, you mean pho. And then you have to be the snob who is like, well, actually, it's pronounced pho. So I said, I'm sidestepping that shit, and I'm just calling it pho because that's the way it looks in the English language. And I was accused of being racist for not pronouncing things the way they actually are in the original language. Okay. So now, when you motherfuckers say, well, actually, in the commercials in the U.S., they say Samsung. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, the people who make the commercials for Samsung in America are racist, okay? Because it's Samsung. I'm pronouncing everything in the exact intonation that it is in the language that it started from, okay? And it is not gochujang, it's gochujang, okay? It's, we've come too far to slip backwards into the gochujang. The A sound, it's more like an uh sometimes, not always. Korean language is actually based. Dude, so honestly, like I, I don't speak Korean well at all. But there are some things in Korean that just make you wonder, like, why wasn't... Well, I, I know English origin story is, like, kind of a hodgepodge of, like, other romance languages. But you'll, you'll be, like, jealous. You'll be like, why doesn't the language that I speak work like this? Like, for example, why in, in English, why are there two or more sounds for each vowel? That's idiotic. Couldn't you just double the size of the alphabet instead? But no, oh, we have, whatever, seven vowels, but each of them has two sounds. So how do you know how to pronounce uh, this one or this one when you read it? Oh, you just hear the word enough times and get corrected, and then eventually you remember them all specifically? That's crazy, dude! That's insanity, that basically the way you learn English is just memorizing how to say every word instead of being able to create it at runtime. Like, from a word that you see in text. Like, in Korean, I'm sure there's some exceptions, but for the most part, every consonant and vowel sound is exactly the same every time you see it. So as long as you can read Hangul, which is not difficult to learn the alphabet, you know, there's, there's only 20-something characters, you can sound out all of the words that you're reading, which is very helpful because then some of those words are taken from English or other languages and you're like, I don't recognize this word. Then you sound it out and you're like, computer, bagel, you know? And you're like, oh, I'll have one bagel, please. Then in English, you're like, okay, um, you know, R-O-U-G-H, obviously that's rough. You'd have to be an idiot to not know that. B-O-U-G-H? Oh, that's bow. Why? Because fucking 900 years ago, William the Conqueror had the audacity to cross the English Channel and, like, Harold Godwinson got shot in the eye with an arrow. And King Ivar the Boneless was like, I'm out of this bitch. Like, it just, it doesn't make any sense. Like, it's not that I necessarily have, like, over respect for the Korean language, it's more like it feels like every language should have been designed as deliberately as Hangul was designed. It makes it much e I'm not saying Korean's an easy language to speak, but it's certainly a very easy language to, to read. Now, learning what the words actually mean 
is another step, but you have to learn that regardless of, of what language you're learning it in. So to skip the step where you have to then learn how to recognize every single word based on sight is just crazy. Like the most insulting thing about English, without a doubt, is how they have all these grammar rules, but the grammar rules are right like literally 52% of the time. It's like I before E, except after C, and then there's nine different subcases. And if the uh, oh, and if you're reading something from a Scottish author, then maybe C O L O N E L, Colonel. You're absolutely what what like English is bad. I love it because I'm I'm I choose to think of it like it's it's kind of like C, like it's a a language that if you master everything about it, you can do anything you want. And that might be true of every language, but I'm from North America, so you have to forgive me, me my ignorance in that one. But in terms of actually learning it, it's, it's just insane. You basically just, you have to learn every single word. That's, that's nonsense. We, they could have done better. L I E U T E N A N T. Lieutenant in England. In America, Lieutenant. Shit is just idiotic, man. It's, it's nonsensical. And I'm sure, again, I bet there's examples in Korean. Where it's like the word is spelled like... The, like the, the classic example for me is that like... S-I, in Korean, you would expect it to be C, but actually it gets pronounced as she most of the time. So like, King Shilla is not, it's not S-H-I-L-L-A, it's the character of S. Anyway, it's like, but that's not the norm. In English, that's the norm. People will actually get like up in your face about ridiculous shit, you know? Oh, it's not octopuses, it's octopi. That's when people's, when, when you force someone to learn every single edge case in order to be considered as like fluently speaking a language, then like, that's you get people whose whole self-worth is wrapped up in their third grade grammar class mark. I know you're saying actually octopuses and octopodes are also fine. You don't realize that you've walked into my trap and now you're, you're simply proving my point. I have given you a, a low-hanging fruit and allowed you to snare yourself in the punji sticks. I mean, I, the only language I speak is English, and there's still things I get confused about all the time. Semi-annual versus bi-annual, bi-weekly, is that 2x a week or once every two weeks? Was the man well hung? Or was he well, comma, hanged? Those are two very, very different statements that might affect what your plans are for the rest of the evening. Or both, I suppose it's a situation. Those don't have to be mutually exclusive. What do you think about traveling to a country without speaking the language at all? I mean, I think for traveling, that's reasonable. I don't think you should have to speak French fluently to go to Paris or speak Spanish to go to, you know, Madrid. Um, I will say, so I, I learned some Korean in Korea and some Korean before I went to Korea, but I definitely worked with some people who didn't even learn like basic phrases. I, and I almost think they took it as like a point of pride that they're like, we don't even know how to say, like, thank you, or like, where's the bathroom, and stuff like that. And, and that always struck me as kind of crazy. I don't know if people, maybe they realize it, maybe they don't. If you're from North America, you actually have it, like, so easy for travel. Everywhere I've ever traveled to in my entire life, like, bends over backwards to make life easy for English tourists. 
Not British tourists, but like tourists who only speak English. And then like... In Europe, I feel like almost every country learns at least two languages. One of which is usually English, which, which is the, the cheat code worldwide. We, like, North America is like the only country on Earth where you, you skip the work, but get the reward. It's not fair. But it benefits me, so I'm gonna say it's very cool. Okay, I'm speaking about Canada and the United States. Even in Canada, like, you know, a lot of people are bilingual. I am not, though. I'm basically American. I only speak English. And then a little bit of a language that I learned when I became enamored with the country's media. And then lived there for a year, I guess. I feel like, well, I don't know about Australia and New Zealand, but I feel like in England, you gotta learn, like, some French, right? I mean, you're on an island, but you're kind of like, you could, it, if, in the winter, this is an honest question. One of my favorite kinds of questions. An insane, honest question, like, could you swim from Australia New to New Zealand? In the winter time, can you walk from Dover to Dunkirk? Could you walk from Kent to Calais? Yes, I've done it. I knew it. I knew it. Of course. I guess you could walk through the channel. It doesn't freeze over. How long is... Well, I mean, people swim it. If people swim it, people can walk it. I guess it's just the question of whether or not it froze over. It's the ocean. Oh, get over yourself. It's not the ocean, it's the English Channel. It's it's only 20 miles. That's crazy. Okay, dude, look at dude, I can't believe we still won. Slash marker Isaac 4. Okay.